Here's a partial fractions decomposition problem with a definite integral. And I also chose the factors so that some of the integrals uh, would be instructive. So I am making a proposal that this thing can be broken down into simpler pieces. I have an irreducible quadratic factor and I have a linear factor. And this proposal is general enough to get the job done. So a general linear term over that quadratic x squared plus 2 plus a constant over that linear term. Then as usual, we multiply both sides by the least common denominator, which is x squared plus 2 times x plus 3. And then everything cancels out in the denominators. On the left-hand side, I'm left with an x. On the right-hand side, my x, plus, my x squared plus 2 cancels out of the first term, leaving me with an ax plus b multiplying x plus 3. And in my second term, my x plus 3 cancels, leaving me with a x squared plus 2. Now, on this one, it isn't so bad to just expand everything on the right-hand side. And then we'll do the comparison of coefficients on the left and right. So I have ax squared plus 3ax plus bx plus 3b plus cx squared plus 2c. And I'm going to collect all the quadratic terms. There's just an a plus c there. Then my linear terms. And all I've got is a 3ax and a bx. So 3a plus b times x. I'm going to go ahead and just cross out every term that I've taken care of so I don't miss anything. And then my constant terms are 3b plus 2c. And on the left-hand side, I've got just an x. So for this to be true for all x, the coefficient of each power of x has to be the same on the left and right. And the coefficient of x squared on the left is 0, and on the right it's a plus c. So a plus c must be equal to 0. The coefficient of x is 3a plus b on the right-hand side, and it's 1 on the left. So 3a plus b is equal to 1. And then the constant on the left is 0, and on the right is 3b plus 2c. So 3b plus 2c must be equal to 0. Now I have to solve the system of equations. So I suppose what I'll do here is eliminate b from the second two equations, and then I'll combine that with the top one. So I end up with what I'm going to do is multiply the middle equation by negative 3, and I'm going to add it to the equation below. And so that produces a negative 9a, and then negative 3 times b plus 3b. That's the b's are gone, and that was the whole point. And I have still a 2c hanging out on the left side. And then when I take negative 3 times 1 and add to 0, I get a negative 3. Now my top equation was a plus c equals 0. So I suppose I'll just use elimination on this. Substitution isn't bad either. And I'm going to take 9 times the bottom equation and add it to the top equation. That eliminates the a's, and it gives me 9c plus 2c. That's 11c equals negative 3. And so it turns out c is negative 3 over 11. I know that a is the negative of c, so a is equal to 3 elevenths. And then I'm, I'm going to solve for b, I think, just by going back to my original second equation. It's real easy to solve for b out of that. So b is 1 minus 3a. 1 minus 3 times 3 elevenths. 1 minus 9 elevenths, which is 11 elevenths minus 9 elevenths. So it leaves me with 2 elevenths. All right, so I've got my a, b, and c. And now I can decompose my original integral into three different pieces and hope they're not too bad to integrate. My original integral becomes the integral from 0 to root 2. And then I'm going to have a negative, or I'm going to have an a x plus b. So that's 3 elevenths x plus 
two, two 11. So I'm going to pull the 11 out in front. So I get a 3x plus 2 over 11 times the quantity x squared plus 2 plus a c over x plus 3, and that's negative 3 elevenths. So I'll just go minus 3 over 11 times x plus 3 dx. Now, we're going to get into integrating this thing now. And that's going to require splitting up that first fraction into two pieces. So one of them is going to have a 3x over the denominator. And that's not so bad because basically the derivative of the denominator is sitting in the numerator. And then we're going to have a 2 over that denominator. And that has the form of an inverse tangent. So it's going to be something about the inverse tangent. Then when I integrate my second term, that's a simple natural log of a linear factor. So let's split these things up and get into it. So my first one, again, it splits into two pieces. The first one is going to be a 3x over 11 times x squared plus 2. And I'm going to go ahead and just pull the 3 out in front while I'm working on it. And I'll pull the 11 out in front too. Why not? My second piece comes from the constants in that original numerator. So it's going to be a 2 over 11 times 1 over x squared plus 2. I'm going to pull the 2 over 11 out in front. And then my third piece is going to be a negative 3 elevenths integral from 0 to root 2. 1 over x plus 3 dx. Okay, again, the, the first piece is not bad because I can just set it up to have the derivative of the denominator sitting right in the numerator. So I'm ready to guess with the chain rule backwards. All I did was put a 2 up there and then divide it out to compensate. My second piece you may remember is an inverse tangent kind of thing. If you don't remember, then it's simple to do a trig substitution on this. So I'm going to go ahead and just do that substitution right now. And then my third piece just integrates to a natural log of the denominator. So let's just take a little time out and do a trig sub on the middle one. And I'm going to say let x equal root 2 tangent theta. So that x squared gives me a 2 tangent theta, and that allows me to factor out um, the 2 and get, get rid of it. And then I have to transform the differential as well. dx is going to be root 2 secant squared theta d theta. And I have to transform my limits of integration as well. When x equals 0, that means the tangent of theta is 0, which means theta is 0. And when x equals root 2, that means root 2 equals root 2 tangent theta, which means theta is going to be, or I should say tangent theta is going to be 1, which means theta is pi over 4. All right, so this one, the middle one, becomes 2 elevenths integral 0 to pi over 4 dx was root 2 secant squared theta d theta. The denominator is going to be uh, two, oops, 2 tangent squared. So it will be 2 tangent squared plus 2. If I pull a 2 out of that, I get 1 plus tangent squared theta, which is going to be secant squared theta. But that cancels out with the secant squared theta in the numerator. And so I get 2 elevenths integral from 0 to pi over 4. And let's see, I have uh, root 2 over 2, which I suppose I'll just leave inside d theta. 
which gives me 2 elevenths times root 2 over 2 theta evaluated from 0 to pi over 4 which is just pi over 4 and so I end up with a root 2 over 11 times pi over 4. All right, let's go to a new page to finish things up. My middle integral turned out by using a trig sub to be root 2 pi over 44. And now I just have to do the first and last integrals. And the first one, I'm carrying constants of uh, 3 over 22 out in front. I had already set, up, set it up so that the derivative of the denominator was sitting in the numerator. So I'm, I can just do the chain rule backwards now, and I get natural log. I don't need an absolute value since x squared plus 2 is positive. x squared plus 2 evaluated from 0 to root 2. My middle term again, I've already determined that that's root 2 pi over 44. And then my third integral... I have minus 3 over 11, natural log absolute value x plus 3. I don't have to worry about the absolute value on this either because if I look at my integration interval, all those x's are positive. x plus 3 from 0 to root 2. So I get 3 over 22. And then the natural log of root 2 squared, which is, is 2 plus 2, so natural log 4. Minus the thing I get when I plug in 0 for x, that's natural log 2, plus a root 2 pi over 44, minus 3 elevenths, times a natural log of root 2 plus 3, minus a natural log of 3. And that's our integral.